Welcome along to sunny Spain. It's not actually Spain. It's England after two months of extremely hot weather, but it may as well be Spain. Bloody beautiful. I'm also here with another hot beauty. This is the Triumph Speed Triple RR. Now last month I took this bike on a track day at Cadwell Park. I'll put a link to the video at the top there. I said at the end of that video I was going to borrow this bike for a bit of a longer period on the road. Well here it is. I've spent the last two weeks living with this bike as if it was my own machine. I've been on my Sunday morning jaunts to Weymouth for a breakfast. I've been up and down the motorways on it. I've used this bike as if it was my own. So as part of this video, I'm gonna talk through the pros and cons of this machine. Everything I've discovered about it, living with this for the last two weeks. So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a glass of sangria and I'll see you after the intro. Chopsy, roll it. <laughs> As the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed, for the last couple of weeks we've had a new channel sponsor. So I just want to say before we get into the video, a massive welcome to Real Rider, who've now become a channel sponsor. So really, really appreciated. What Real Rider do is basically they produce an app which protects you if you have a crash. So basically you'll have this running on your phone. If you have an accident, the app detects you've had a crash all the accelerometers in the phone if you're traveling along and you suddenly come to a halt the, the the phone basically calls the emergency services so if you do a lot of riding on your own you know without friends on certainly in remote areas this can this app can actually save your life because you have a, have a crash it will call the emergency services for you but just to let you know and say a massive thank you to real rider for joining the channel so please you know show them some love i've got a link in the description to their website show them some love and welcome real rider to the channel so back to the bike as i mentioned at the beginning i've been riding this for the last couple of weeks um i've sort of learned a lot about this machine i mean i've spent quite a bit of time on this machine over the last few months really since this bike came out and uh, originally i said you know it's in between a naked and a sports bike you know it crosses that bridge between a naked and a sports bike i've changed my mind a little bit about that statement after spending a bit more time on this machine but we'll come on to that in a second for now let's start it up and have a listen to that beautiful triple engine wake up dashboard we have actually started there we go a little bit lag that's one of my criticisms of this bike the dash but we'll come on to that so listen to this <laughs> sounds wonderful so what we're doing this video i'm going to cover the good and the bad with this bike it's a it's a brilliant bike it's a fantastic bike but like every motorcycle you know it's not absolutely perfect I, i've not i've yet to find i think the perfect motorcycle so uh, we will cover the things i think can be improved on this bike but overall it is very very good so let's talk a little bit about that riding position when i borrowed this initially you know i sort of said it was that that bridge between a sports bike and a naked that is sort of true but it's, it's not quite the bridge i thought it was to start with what is great about this bike and bear in mind when it comes to ergos i'm six foot two 20 stone so everyone's different but for a six foot two person, which is all, all I can really comment on, is it's pretty comfortable. Now, the, the, what is great about this, what is better on this than other sports bikes is the pegs. The pegs are nice and low. If you compare that to a modern sports bike, the GSXR, even the S1000RR, which is the most comfortable of the modern sports bikes, the pegs are considerably lower on this machine so it's not too aggressive in the pegs it's a nice comfortable leg position but these bars are not in between a sports bike and a naked that they're, they're they're like again they're like comfortable sports bike position these are similar bar position to the new gsxr the s1000 double r it's more comfortable than the likes of the r1s the panagales but it's not a really in between a naked and a sports bike you do have weight on your wrists on this machine 
another great thing about this bike is it is just so easy to ride fast and again that's another reason why I think I was five seconds a lap quicker on this compared to the Super Duke Evo it's just absolutely effortless to ride partly due to that front end which just goes wherever you point it it's got super coarser tires which are just work so well on this bike and provide so much confidence also the engine power delivery is i think perfect you've got so much bottom end a load of mid-range and you've got top end as well but it's just so easy to put the power down to to lay it down it just lays down so easily it's it's very neutral feeling and there's no squirming it's very stable it's a really easy bike to ride fast right we're coming up to my uh, hill climb road here so i'm going to bang it into sports mode now which will firm up all of the suspension sport mode press the button close the throttle in a minute it will decide to go back to that screen that that is one of my well, yeah, the main criticism with this bike is the interface on the tft it's a little bit clunky to go between the modes you can't turn off wheelie control from traction control it's still conjoined at the hips you know you can't separate them which isn't good enough in this day and age when everybody else is separating wheelie and traction control and the bike will wheelie a bit you know it doesn't lock the front down it will let a little bit of wheelie but i want to be able to turn the wheelie control off i want to be able to leave the wheelie control turned off like i can on the super duke like i can on all of the ducatis you know on most of the ktms as well just leave it turned off don't you know even when you turn the bike on and off it remains off but on this you can't even separate it and even if you want to go into track mode while you're riding you, you won't let you you know there's a lot of restrictions around the triumph electronics where you can't do this you've got to pull the clutch before you start the bike it's just a bit a little bit nanny-ish and that is what I, that's one of the few criticisms with this machine here we go i've got my rear mount right where my foot needs to go but i mean look at how it changes direction oh wow i can't move out of the seat because i've got my bloody rear camera mount blocking where i can put my feet on the left it is so so nice in the corners get over it's incredible there's so much confidence from this bike the chassis you know, the tires it just oozes confidence and makes you lay it right over you know there's no moments on this bike it, it just sticks to the road it's, it's incredible it's, it's one of the best things about how easy and how well this bike handles <laughs> oh, so i mean it's just power everywhere everywhere and the wheels trying to come up you know the electronics are dialing the wheel down keeps it it comes up a little bit just to give you a bit of fun and then dials it down again you can actually have the wheel just bouncing along like this as it comes up it kills it it comes but only gently it just ends up bouncing like this in like third gear on the power you know it's uh it's got so much grumpness second oh the fuel light's on it just starts coming up the fuel on this machine i mean it's pretty economical but we did a little run down to weymouth the other week and he was on his new gsxr Womble was on his tuono we all filled up and brimmed them at the same time and this came in the middle of the two bikes the gsxr was more fuel efficient all riding similarly the gsxr was the most fuel efficient this used another liter or so per tank than the GSXR, and the Tuono used an extra three liters. So, you know, this triple configuration is slightly more thirsty than, uh, you know, a straight four, I would say. But then you do have that power and, and performance lower down in the rev range. The V4 is way more thirsty, so it sort of falls in between the two 
but nowhere near as thirsty as a V4. One of the highlights of this machine is that electronic Olin suspension. There's a lot of highlights with this bike. It's a really good bike, including a super smooth, beautiful quick shifter, which we'll talk about in a second. But the one of the highlights has to be that electronic suspension. Now, when, when I bought this initially, I was a little bit disappointed. It's a little bit limited, the electronics on this bike, and that includes the way you can adjust the electronic suspension. But the actual electronic suspension itself, I mean, at the moment, it's in the comfort mode. This is in the normal road mode, this bike, and the suspension is just in comfort. And it's really, really plush. I mean, this is a really bumpy, bit of road. I mean you could feel the road but there's nothing harsh about it. It irons out all the harshness from the bumps but it still even in comfort mode gives you the feedback from the tarmac. It's very very good this new EC2 electronic suspension and if I do go into the sport mode it stiffens it up you know and if you go into the track mode it goes even stiffer and, I, and like I say I've had this on track the suspension was brilliant on track even at Cadwell Park which is such an up and down you know heavy braking areas tight and twisty in the track mode it was fantastic in the comfort mode on the road it's also fantastic I mean it's a shame this electronic system isn't available on the RS model because the RS is a little bit harsh this just shows how nice it can be this suspension and uh, yeah it works beautifully on the road this and I think that's one of the reasons why it's not too uncomfortable with these drop bars because if you're on a sports bike the suspension is normally a bit stiffer so you've got drop bars you've got weight on your wrists and then you hit potholes and it just jars your wrists because the suspension is so good on this it alleviates that jarring and I think that's why it's not an uncomfortable sports bike so I am going to call this a sports bike with these drop bars because they are quite low but with that suspension irons out all the potholes irons out all that aggressive smashing through your wrists and uh, this makes it a beautiful magic carpet ride let me just show you the quick shifter blipper because it is it is good on this bike here we go first gear it's sort of a bit of a slower change but it's smooth. Let's go down. Even into first. Let's do it again. I mean, you can even be quite lazy with the shifter. You don't have to be really precise with the gearbox. You know, you can be quite lazy on the shifter. It doesn't mind. The gearbox is actually pretty smooth, but one of the downsides with this bike, it is a little bit hard to find neutral. One of the few criticisms with this bike it can be tricky to find neutral but apart from that the gearbox is smooth beautiful oh see 30 mile an hour through town you get a little bit of that weight cruise control is a is a blessed release on this motorcycle and the and you know is this illegal to ride taking your hands off the bars by the way i'm never sure whether this is considered illegal because of course you've got the rear brake you, you, you can't people say oh you can't get to the I've got the rear brake right there so but is this illegal am I being illegal now <laughs> let me know in the comments but you need to really do this you know on, on a sports bike just to sit up and rest rest your arms like this and cruise control is a must for a sports bike in my view and it's a good system on this Control response is also brilliant on this, you know, there's no need to rush out, get things mapped. It's got a fantastic throttle response on this. Oh, you're in the way, little Hyundai. On the motorway, 70 miles an hour, this screen does a pretty decent job at speed. It's a little bit noisy, I mean, you could have another couple of inches there and I could always use another couple of inches but it's good enough you know I know it's only got a bikini fairing but you don't really miss the lower fairing when you're at speed now it's as good as a full-on sports bike really from a you know you can see at 80 on this without no problems whatsoever best thing about this engine is the sound of it the airbox noise from this bike listen to listen to the airbox noise Oh, 
foot. It's fast, this thing. It's bloody fast. The brakes are so good as well. I'd love to hear one with, a, with an exhaust system on it. I've not heard one yet with a with a decat. Oh, this sounds amazing. I've come away from my time with the Speed RR in sort of two minds, you know. I really, really like the bike. You know, the only niggles with this machine is you've got to put it in second before you can find neutral. Okay, I could certainly live with that. And the electronics are a little bit nanny-ish, but I can live with that as well. You know, this bike excels in so many areas. So the Triumph Speed RR, it's, it's a really interesting bike and it's sort of out there on its own. I, I don't know really what you what, el what you could compare this bike to. You know, it's there's nothing else like it really. I think the, the closest rival to this is probably the Thruxton. <laughs> probably this is like just a more modern Thruxton. You know, it's the same thing with the bikini fairing, you know, the drop bars. It's a bit of a calf racer, this. It's like a modern looking, retro y, a little bit calf racer. You know, that's I think what you've got to com compare it to. And the Thruxton is a similar riding position to this. And again, that's another triumph. I don't think there's any other bike. You know, people say, oh, the Super Veloce. Not really. Not really, I don't think. I think Triumph have this bike in their own little niche. Personally, I if I was designing this bike, I would have raised the bars up a little bit and had them coming up above the yokes. A similar position to the RS660 from Frilia. So you're, you're, bar, you're, you're here. So you've still got that bit of weight over the front, but you have really got you know the weight off your wrists by sort of 80%. You've still got... 30% weight on your wrists with this setup and I think that's a bit too much it's full-on sports bike comfortable sports bike position on the front and I think they should have just brought these up a tiny bit more so there we go thanks very much for watching as always it's really appreciated massive thanks to Triumph for lending me the double R again and for taking me on track with it as well so really appreciated and Triumph for brilliant for you know for lending bikes to people like me you know they they're really on the ball with this so uh, yeah massive thanks to triumph really ahead of the game really when it comes to this sort of uh, you know way of advertising their bikes and lending bikes to to vloggers and uh, influencers I, I do hate that term i don't consider myself an influencer <laughs> i suppose i am but i do i do hate the term I like to think I was a bit more objective with my reviews than, you know, an influencer who just goes, oh yes, everything's brilliant. Is that harsh? Is that unfair? Uh, I don't think so. But there we go. Thanks for watching. Really appreciated. And I will see you on the next video. Keep it rubber side down. See you later, guys. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> Down, I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>